Hey, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dancefish.com. My little brother Jonathan surprised me on my birthday and showed up today. It's a good birthday present. I'm 42 now, which is a little crazy. So we decided since he's here, and it's a crazy busy packing day that he's gonna do the camera and we'll do a little vlog. I usually can't do that just because uh, I can hardly get done just the, the packing, so adding the camera work to it just takes too much time. But what we're doing here is we're just catching our second cart of CPDs for the day. We caught a full cart before this. This is the second cart. They're super popular, well, because they're super pretty. But um, come on over, I'll show you how I do it. So let me get this one out of the net. So most of you know that each fish gets its own bag. In almost all cases, every now and then there's a few fish that I feel like um, benefit from the company of others. And so sometimes I'll put those in the same bag, bag things like uh, African glass fish and stuff like that, that really rely on the presence of others around them to feel secure. But the way I do this is I just take a big net, big blue net. This is the one that, can you see this? This is the one that my puffer bit a hole in to get it a pleco that I was trying to save. <laughs> just bit a hole right through it. Anyway, I catch a bunch of little fish in there and then I take a white net. So this is kind of coarse and if, if you're not careful can rough up the fish. It's good to catch them in that and hold them in that, but to actually get them out it's better if you can do, use a soft white net. And when you do that, you can see the fish really clearly against the white. So you can tell the sex, um, you can check its fins, make sure they're okay, check its eyes, make sure they're not cloudy, kind of see the body condition easily, make sure it's not emaciated. And so each fish, as I dip it out, just gets its, its own, which bag am I on? This one, its own little check so that hopefully we don't end up sending you something subpar. Now, I mean, you do this thousands and thousands of times in a day, or, or in a week or whatever, and um, you're gonna miss something maybe sometimes, but in general, it seems to work, you get down in the water, buddy, pretty well. So that's kind of the process for little fish. Get a big group of them and take a small net in and kind of inspect them. As you, as you go, seems to work pretty well. The one thing that is a little hard to tell is you're kind of looking at one side of the fish. They don't always uh, oblige you and show you like this and then this, like on, they're on the runway or something, right? So, but you take a look and make sure they're all right. So that's what we're doing over and over and over and over today. <laughs> We've got most of the fish, um, not most of them, most of the fish from the annex we've already caught, so the good news is a lot of them are already done. I'm hoping to not be up till 3 a.m. today. We'll see. It takes as long as it takes, but uh, the good news is a lot of the orders today are a lot of one species, so there's like a couple carts, or a cart and a quarter, I guess, of CPDs, and then there's gonna be several carts of rice fish. And so when you have a lot of orders for a single species coming from a single tank, it's a lot more efficient. Um, a lot of times you get, I, you know, two fish from this tank, and four fish from that tank, and six fish from the other tank, and it's fine, but it is a lot less efficient because you have to travel from tank to tank and get a new net for each tank and all that stuff, so. There we go, that's a good one. So there we are. All the CPDs for the day. Check that one off the list and let these guys out of the net. Make sure I didn't, <laughs> yeah, make sure they're actually out. I've made that mistake before. And then, so you all know what you're getting when they arrive, Mr. Sharpie. It's about time for a new Sharpie. All right. That bag's funky. 
I don't trust that bag. When I change the water in it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a note on the bag here for myself to change that bag out or reseal that corner or something. I have my kids help sometimes. One of their jobs, not all the time, but sometimes, is to um, crimp the corners of the bags. Because I figure if they're watching YouTube, they might as well be helping. And uh, usually they do a really good job, but every now and then I find one where I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. That's a female. The CPDs, the, the easiest way to sex them is um, the anal fin on the females will have a little bit of orange at the tip up next to the body, not the tip, at the place the fin meets the body, but then it'll be clear after that. I don't know if you can see this, but see that girl? See how her anal fin is pretty much clear? There's a little bit of an orange stripe up next to the body, but then it's clear. Um, that's the easiest way to tell the glance that they're female. Watch, this will actually end up being a male. Someone will be like, nope, that's a male. <laughs> but I don't think so. Usually the males have um, orange like the female, but then a dark stripe and then another orange stripe, like, like this. So see the difference on his anal fin. You see how it's got, hopefully it's showing up on camera. It's got kind of an orange stripe, then a dark stripe, then an orange stripe, then a dark stripe. Dorsal fin too, you can kind of see the striping going on there. So that's how I do it. Hopefully everyone has been getting these. I've sold a lot of these over the years. Um, hopefully you've been getting what you want. I accidentally put two in one bag there. It's a pair, so I'll get an extra. Sometimes with these little bags, it's more pain to take them out than it's worth, so sometimes if I screw up, I just consider it a bonus for somebody. That one I actually can't sex easily. I think the kids are having fun. Can you hear that? <laughs> Upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a clear male. Well, oh, this guy's a beauty. Well, <laughs> you know you're a true fish geek and you're kind of unbalanced when you can do this every day and still look at the fish and be like, I don't know, and, and still enjoy looking at them, like in the back, pulling out and be like, oh, that was so beautiful. Like everything else in my life has come and gone like interests. Not my wife, I'm not talking about you, Brenda, but like interests have come and gone, except this one. For some reason, I don't know what it is. But uh, fish have been with me for a long time and I don't see them going anywhere. I, I mean, I get more into it as the years go by, not less into it, which is a little strange. Everything else kind of comes and goes. Again, not you, honey. <laughs> All right, so we're on to some rice fish. Um, these have sold very well, and I'm glad because uh, well, I was really nervous about getting them. Here, come take a look. I was really nervous about getting these because I've tried a couple times, and they've done horribly. And so this is a new supplier and I was like, okay, I'll try again, and I'm happy to say they've done really well. I, I honestly don't think I've lost any of these. So these came in labeled as, these are the um, La May, and they called them Orange La May. But um, if you look at them, the orange is actually more of a gold, and some of them are almost all gold, but only very, very few. A lot of them have like a gold head or patches of gold. 
and then a few of them are pretty much pure white with maybe a little gold on the nose like that one. I don't see any gold on this one. So what I don't know is they're still pretty small. I'd say these are about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch, the biggest ones. What I don't know is if as they grow, are they gonna turn more orange or are they actually gonna be a gold color and the supplier just calls them orange because they think it'll sell better. I mean, common names are hard. The industry's always trying to make up new names to sell stuff better, which bothers me, but whatever. Um, so the issue I'm having here is every, not everyone, but lots of the people that ordered them left a note that said, I want the most orange ones, please. The problem is there's only a few <laughs> that are mostly orange or gold or, I don't know, where's the line when something stops being orange and becomes gold, I'm not sure. But, so what I'm gonna do is the ones that have the most orange or gold, it, I will, um, Mark those bags, I'll try to catch, keep track of that as I go, and then try to keep track of the ones that have um, some orange, but not all, and then the ones that are pretty much pure white. In fact, if I can, I'm gonna avoid, I might avoid sending ones that are pure white unless someone asked for them, which a couple people did. Um, and then at the end, we'll kind of go through, and I'll be like, okay, hey, I have this many that are mostly gold, this many that are patchy gold or orange. Um, we'll try to divide it up so everyone gets something, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to send solid orange slash gold to, I don't think anyone's gonna get an order with just that, because there's only a few, if you look in here, I'm not seeing a lot. So again, I, I hope that as they grow, they get more color. A lot of fish, that's the case, right? They start kind of bland. Not that these are bland, They're even the, the white ones are actually really pretty, but that's what I don't know. This is a bit of a gamble. The other ones are not a gamble at all. The uh, the white ones um, with the iridescent line down the back, those are all like white, like, like they're labeled. So I don't think there'll be any confusion there, but I am a little concerned about these. So pretty much everyone that got an order of these, I, I sent an email that said, okay, I just want to be perfectly clear and, and laid it out. So I think everyone knows what to expect. It's in the description. I made a video about it. Um, so hopefully people will be cool, but it's one of those things in this business where uh, the industry calls something something, and it's like, is that really? Like red. Oh, there's a lot of fish that if they have a tiny bit of yellow on them, the industry goes, this is a whatever flaming red, and it's like, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I think they look awesome. Hopefully everyone likes them. And, um, Here we go. Well, I guess it's all about perspective. I just netted these into the net, and from the top against the blue of the net, they actually do look pretty darn orange. Um, and I know rice fish have been bred to be viewed from the top. I guess I'm just so used to viewing fish from the side. But if you look from the top, there's a lot of orange there. I mean, this guy obviously just has a bright orange head, and his body's white. I guess we could call that a koi, haha. -ha. But um, I'm not going to do that. But um, yeah, there's a lot more orange in there than I thought. I guess it's just to get about what's behind them against the black background. It was different. Now I got them in the net. I'm like, oh, those are those are fine. Maybe I didn't have to worry so much. But if you come down and look from the side, I don't know if you can. I know that it's hard to focus. You got it. Um, if you look from the side, you'll see. You look like a lot of orange from the top, but from the side, there's a lot of white on them. So, since they're bred to be viewed from the top, I guess that's why they're comfortable saying, hey, these are orange. Like this, that fish looks like it's got a lot of white on it, right? But if you look from the top, I can tell that's got a lot of orange across the top of it. So, anyway, we're almost done. Yeah. Good job. It's nice to know if you get in a pinch, there's people that can help. Like this guy. <laughs> we got one more and we're done. All right, hey. Good job, man. Give me five. Thank you. And you've made a good boss. 
making sure we did it right. Huh? <laughs> There's always one. <laughs> Smile, guys. You're alive, buddy. All right, well, this is amazing. This is a pretty busy day, and it's only 11.48. Last week it was 3 a.m., 2.30, 2.30 a.m., so this is great. So we're done packing, net drop. But let's show you just a little bit to give you an idea. Here, let me get this out of your way. <laughs> um, so it's a bunch of the small bags, another set of small bags. I need to build some shelves so I can fit more, but that's another day. Um, and over here we've got a lot of small bags and a lot of quarry bags. So the smaller quarries, we, we just crimp the corners this way so they have a flat bottom. So that's a little pygmy quarry in there. Let's see if you can, I don't know if you can see him. He's, he's quite small. He's a pygmy. Um, but I found that helps the quarries. You can put them in the bags without a flat bottom, then they're like, it's so solid, they can't really, they're like tanks, they can't, they're on the bottom, just sitting sideways, it's no good. And then some of the bigger ones, um, got a Bolivian Ram in that one. Again, flat bottoms just to give them more space. But, so that's, that's today. Tomorrow, we're gonna change all the water in the bags, because they're gonna poop tonight in the bags. So, we joke that what I do is actually poop management not fish selling. Um, and then we'll seal them up and uh, get them out to you. So for everyone that ordered and that your orders are going out Monday, your fish are somewhere here. <laughs> but that's it. And I'm so glad it's not even midnight. Uh oh. <laughs> Speaking of which, it's probably bedtime. <laughs> All right. Should have uh, left the Romstein playing. <laughs> Kitchen mood. <laughs> well, it's day two. We're all a little punchy. Pistol, bagger extraordinaire, fish packer, fish packer. <laughs> poop manager. Poop manager. Yep. Uh, sealing some bags. I am attempting to harvest some black worms for a customer. Um, customer bought half a pound of black worms. So let's see how many we got here. I don't know. Hopefully half a pound, probably not yet. How do we do? 0.435. So close. Getting close. Getting close. And there's a little bit of crushed coral in there. So I'll have to give her some extra. A couple snails, some crushed coral. So I'll have to make sure to overweigh it by a few ounces to make up for that. It's cleaning worms. It's a living. <laughs> That's my signature move right there. <laughs> Pretty good. You got fish backers. Yeah, yeah pistol. Uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Who knew you could have grace huh. in this sport? I had a black worm on my nose. How did that get there? Jesus. <laughs> it's better than hanging out of your nose. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just going to balance these extras out on this other two. That's a green worm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fish for days. That'll get me. All right. Well, we got some more to do, but I hear a rumor that barbecue is ready to eat. So I think we should go up and eat something. Sounds good, man. Let's do that. Done. Off to FedEx to send all these. Thanks everybody that ordered. It's been super busy and we're super grateful. Um, yeah, <laughs> keep it up.
I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we're done. Um, and do it again tomorrow. All right, until next time, thanks. Bye-bye.